Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will introduce the topic of AI agents. Specifically, we will go through tool calling and laying graph agents using Amazon Bedrock. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at tool calling. We'll see how you can create a tool, how to bind it to a Bedrock LLM, and finally, how to invoke the tool. Let's start by creating a simple calculator tool. This tool gets a numeric formula written using Pythonic symbols, and does the calculation for us. We use the safe eval function from the Saval package to avoid the dangerous raw eval method which leads to security vulnerabilities for example, by executing terminal commands and so on. Finally, we use the tool decorator to turn this function into a langchain runnable that can be invoked with the corresponding input. Next, we need to bind this tool to an LLM. So let's start by initializing our bedrock model. As usual, we get our bedrock credentials from our secret YAML file, and use the chat bedrock class to instantiate a Claude Sonnet 3.5 model, with our access key and secret access key. If you haven't already, you can check out our bedrock tutorial on how to get those credentials and unlock access to all bedrock models. Now, to equip this raw LLM with our newly created tool, we simply use the bind tools method which, as you can see, binds tool like objects to chat models. We put our calculator in the list of tools, and that's how we obtain our tool LLM. Let's now test this combination on a concrete situation. Say we want our model to evaluate this mathematical expression, e to the pi minus pi to the e. We write a query asking the model to provide the result of this expression. Our raw LLM will try to answer on his own, possibly giving a wrong answer just like this one. Our tool LLM on the other hand will not give an immediate response. As you can see the content is empty here. What it does is stop the generation for tool use and provide a list of tool calls in the output. This list will contain all the tool operations that the LLM itself wants to execute, each with a specific tool name and the input to provide to the tool. Let's see what these tool calls look like. As you can see here, the LLM wants to call one tool, which is our calculator, with this input, the numeric formula for e to the pi minus pi to the e. What we have to do now is to invoke our calculator tool on this specific input provided by the LLM. And as you can see, we get the correct result this time, unlike what the raw LLM gave as an answer. This is what tool calling looks like. You can see it has an interactive aspect, in which we query the LLM, the LLM gives back a tool call, and we have to manually execute the tool call for it. In the second part of this tutorial, we will take a look at LangGraph agents, which automate this entire interactive process between LLMs and tools, so we don't have to intervene at all. Let's check this out. So we start by installing the LangGraph package. We will then define our agentic workflow, go through the graph implementation of this workflow, and finally, compile it into an agent that we can invoke on queries. Our desired workflow looks like this. First, our query goes to the LLM. Second, if the LLM can answer it directly, it ends the process. Otherwise, if the LLM outputs a tool call, as we saw in the previous part, then we invoke the tool. And third, the tool result goes back to the LLM as input, and we repeat step two. Again, if the LLM answers directly, it's over. But if he needs a tool, we go to step three, and so on and so forth, until we get a final answer, or we reach a recursion limit. Now that we have our desired workflow in mind, let's check out the graph implementation. As you can see, we will need three notions here, the state, the nodes, and the edges. So the state of the graph is the information that is shared and transmitted between its elements. We use it to build a state graph, which is a graph whose nodes communicate by reading and writing to a shared state. In our case, the state will simply contain the history of messages, including our initial prompt message, the LLM's response messages, and the tool result messages. It will add them together using this add messages operator. You can store any other information you want in the state, as we will see in future videos. Now that we have our state graph, let's add some nodes to it. Nodes are the elements that communicate with each other inside your graph. So in our case, we have two nodes, the LLM and the tool. To create our LLM node, we build a simple custom class based on our LLM and implement a call method. This method takes as input the current state, invokes the LLM on the list of messages contained in the state, 
and returns its own response messages which will be added to the state. We then use this class, along with our tool LLM from the first part, to instantiate our LLM node. For the tool node, we already have a pre-built class in the LangGraph package, which does all the work we saw in the first part of this tutorial. It takes in the current state, looks for LLM messages containing tool calls, invokes the right tools with the right arguments, and returns tool result messages to the state. So we immediately instantiate our tool node, using this pre-built class along with our list of tools, which for this tutorial will just be our calculator tool. Finally, we add our two nodes to our state graph, while giving them respective names. Finally, we need to add edges to our state graph. These edges will define how the nodes of the graph communicate. Specifically, we want them to communicate following our desired workflow, which we described earlier. So the first step is to invoke the LLM on our initial message, which translates to an edge, going from the start node to the LLM node. Now the second step depends on how the LLM will answer, so we need a conditional edge, which will go from the LLM node to multiple destinations, depending on some conditions. Luckily, we again have a pre-built method from the LangGraph package, which does exactly what we want here. The tools condition method routes to the tool node if it finds a tool call in the last message, otherwise it routes to the end node. We can use this pre-built method directly for this tutorial, but for more complex use cases, we can easily build our own functions, as we will see in future videos. Finally, the third step is to get the tool result and feed it back to the LLM. So we simply add an edge going from the tool node to the LLM node. Okay, now that we have our full state graph with its nodes and edges, we can easily turn it into an agent using the compile method. This method creates a compiled graph object, which is a Langchain runnable, meaning it can be invoked, streamed, batched, and so on. We can also easily display the graph architecture of our agent using the getGraph and drawMermaidPNG methods. And as you can see, our graph correctly represents our desired workflow. The initial message goes straight to the LLM. The LLM can then call a tool, receive the tool result, call some other tool and so on, until the LLM gives a final answer which goes to the end node. Let's now test our simple AI agent on the math query from earlier. Since it's a runnable, we can call the stream method. As you can see, we wrap our query inside an initial message list, which will be the initial state of the graph. We use stream mode equals values and the pretty print method to easily see what's going on under the hood. We launch the query. You can see it's a human message. And there you go. We can the first reply from the LLM, which is an AI message requesting a tool call, followed by a tool message containing the tool result. And finally, we can the second and last reply from the LLM, containing the final answer to the query. And that's it for today's video. In the next tutorial, we will see how we can use this same workflow to allow LLMs to search the web and provide us with answers from the internet, along with the source links. If you appreciate the content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.